Nikolai! 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 Nikolai, Nikolai, wake up, wake up, wake up! I just, I just had the worst dream. Dog, what's wrong? How bad was it? It was, I think it was just a little nightmare. I had a little nightmare, too. Hello, I'm Max Weber. You're watching Goofing Off, and this is Weber's Horror Corner. Today, I'll be discussing a personal favorite game of mine, the indie hit Little Nightmares 2. Released back in February 2021 and developed by Tarzier Studios, this puzzle platforming horror game was received well on release and is even expecting a sequel. Eventually, the game was released to essentially anything that can play games and produced by Namco. In Little Nightmares 2, the player will navigate through treacherous terrain, collect hats and shadows, and even fight some crackheads. Anyhow, with introductions out of the way, we can get right into the meat of the game. And as always, spoilers ahead. Zog, what do you mean, as always? This is your first video. Anyhow, let's get into it. Little Nightmares 2 will send players on an adventure through various environments and puzzles that will both challenge the player's intuition and quick thinking. The game's physics engine allows for puzzles and platforming that blend seamlessly into the detailed environment, creating a deep sense of immersion. Taking a break from the story to simply wander around an area, for example, will reward the player with unique interactions and collectibles, such as the previously mentioned hats and shadows. Working vending machines, x-rays, fridges, and even playing catch with one of the monsters in the game are all optional experiences that, while not serving the story necessarily, further your immersion in the game. You play as Mono, who will jump, slide, and climb to evade danger and progress while also utilizing aid from your partner, Six. The player even has a dedicated command to get her attention by shouting hey when working through puzzles. Along your adventure, you will also acquire a flashlight and TV remote which are used for various puzzle solving. These puzzles are usually presented as a large area of the map in which you will progress by changing aspects of your surroundings to proceed, such as using an elevator to unlock a door, which then allows you to use that same elevator to ride up by jumping onto the roof. A gameplay element will be utilized in the game environments three or four times in the same puzzle, creating a layered process of puzzle solving that is incredibly satisfying to overcome. A game mechanic will also be introduced in an area only to be further evolved as the stage progresses. The boss fight with the hunter, for example, requires you to run and hide between objects as he fires at you, which is then repeated again later in the stage. However, this time you are required to duck below water and hold your breath to avoid being spotted as well. The gameplay loop of Little Nightmares 2 is constantly evolving and adjusted through new mechanics and environmental challenges to keep the experience fresh and ever-changing. Combat is another aspect of this game, while a little rough around the edges, follows the same pattern of evolution as the game goes on. While initially just attacking small enemies and defending yourself, the same combat is also used to break down doors during tense chases and activate bear traps. This gameplay mechanic is introduced to the player not through a tutorial, but rather a passive interaction that is then used later for more aggressive encounters, for example. A simple game mechanic like this is not demonstrated to the player or told through a cutscene, but rather up to the player entirely to figure out through context and player choices. The game itself has what I'd consider to be only two real cutscenes total. There is no yellow spray paint showing you exactly what to grab and where to go in this game. Rather, Properly implemented environmental clues and direction will guide the player, which only strengthens your immersion in the story. And speaking of combat, next up is Monsters. <laughs> Little Nightmares 2 features a variety of adversaries that are unique to each area of the game and all mechanically behave differently. First up are the Crackheads and the Living Hands. 
found in the school and hospital respectively. These smaller opponents must be avoided when unarmed, but when equipped with a weapon, can be battled. The patients, an enemy found in the hospital, can only be stopped with the use of your flashlight, but the second they are being lit up, will sprint towards you and try to get you. In terms of larger, main threats, the hunter is the first you come across in the game, laying out rope traps, bear traps, and wielding a shotgun. The hunter is a threat you can only hide from, and is only defeated when you eventually use the power of friendship to shoot him in the face. Appearing next in your adventure is the teacher, who will capture you for disturbing her class using her neck, which is just a tad longer than normal, and also plays a lovely bit of piano. How nice. You even get a wonderful face-to-face -face encounter in the vents when escaping the school, which is just so pleasant. Next up is the doctor, who runs a clinic that is just wonderfully reminiscent of the healthcare system, one of them at least. His patients roam the halls and are maybe alive, maybe mannequins, maybe even a bit of both. Either way, this big boy loves crawling across ceilings and not being cooked in a furnace. Bonus points to the hospital though for corpse parkour. And finally, the big bad of the game, the man in the hat. Benadryl jokes aside, the man in the hat's design may seem rather basic, but the way in which the developers animated his movements and limbs along with his static nature and his teleportation is just incredible. One of two actual boss fights, this threat is memorable and utilizes multiple game mechanics to great success. And also, also, he isn't the final big bad. The actual final boss is Six. A monstrous transformation of your partner throughout your adventure. You must destroy her music box to free her from the influence of the signal tower. A plot point hinted at throughout the game in many instances. When I had first played through the game, I was shocked at the fact they even found a way to weaponize the mechanic of yelling hey to your friend for a boss fight. But hey, that's how every mechanic in the game is presented. The combination of these diverse and intriguing monsters in a highly interactive, detailed environment is only made better by one additional aspect, the killer soundtrack. Composed by Tobias Lilia, the soundtrack is a beautiful while unnerving mix of ambient noise and music box chords that immerse the player and add a huge layer of depth to each encounter and key moment. My personal picks for the top three pieces are as follows. the soundtrack aligns to the movements of the gameplay, such as the hunter reloading a shotgun, or the entirety of the man in the hat. A wonderful collection of tracks, the game simply wouldn't be the same without it. The soundtrack also reveals a fun fact regarding a scrapped segment of the game. The original track for Man in the Hat that appears on the bonus tracks combines both the final used composition from the game and signal interference into one track that also features heavy ambient noises of train cars. This is due to the fact that the original segment for the man in the hat was going to be entirely featured within a rail yard and be much more extensive than the final game subway chase. Interesting that this soundtrack piece was fully developed for the sequence before being eventually split and reworked for the final product. To conclude, Little Nightmares 2 is a game rich in environmental storytelling and puzzle solving, featuring creative monster design, an incredible soundtrack, and phenomenal art direction. One of my favorites I've played, and a high recommendation, not to mention zero jump scares used, no cheap scares here. Huge plus. I'm Max Weber. 
This is Weber's Horror Corner, and you're watching Goofing Off.